Hello class. Um, so I'm just going to go right to it um, and get started here. So the first thing we're supposed to do is describe how each of the sentencing goals were displayed at different times by Judge Gall. So I'll just kind of go through that. Um, so the first one was goals of sentencing. Uh, specifically, the first one was general deterrence, um, which is defined as the impact of the threat of legal punishment on the public at large. The example that I had for that was with um, who they called Vivian, um, that Judge Gall dealt with. Um, so I just said that basically her, like she, her, she doesn't have much of a threat to the public in my opinion, but her fear of the, of, um, the punishment that she was receiving, which, um, a little background, she was, I, I believe Vivian, so she had violated probation for the fifth or sixth time due to, um, her drug addiction and she had had like she had done everything else that the that Judge Gall had asked of her in terms of rehabilitation but um, because she couldn't stay clean she was back in court again um, and um, so um, I, I said back to what I was saying um, her fear of punishment keeps her pleading f for rehabilitation because jail isn't going to to really heal her or fix her problem so I I guess this this refers to general deterrence because um, I think there's a big um, impact that legal punishment has on the general public and keeps them from doing certain things but I guess in Vivian's case that's why she keeps pleading for rehabilitation because she knows that the punishment that Gaul has been giving her is not going to help her. Um, and then specific deterrence is the impact of the actual legal punishment on those who are apprehended. So in this case, it would be Vivian, um, again, who I was talking about. So she needed drug court, which she kept asking for um, with Judge Call, Gaul, excuse me, um, but he was never giving her the opportunity to do that, and he continue, and so she continues to offend because, she, like I said before, she's not getting the help that she needs. Um, if she had gone to drug court, um, they would have likely put her in an inpatient program, and that um, would help her become clean. And the drug court has people who work specifically with drug abusers and drug addicts um, every day. Whereas Judge Gall kind of says that he does, but he doesn't have the actual, like, background to back it up, I guess. Um, moving on to retribution, which is defined as the defend basically that the defendants are expected to give up something in return for the offenses they committed. Again, I talked about Vivian, so she wants to do the drug rehabilitation to get better, which would be her form of retribution, but instead is kind of... Um, she's, um, keeps getting, like, she's in jail for a while while dealing with the case with, uh, Judge Gall. So she's not getting the best retribution in the best way that she can, I don't think. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but basically, like, I think if she was getting the drug rehabilitation, that would be a better retribution in that, you know, she she's paying for what she's done, but she's also getting better in the process, which kind of goes with rehabilitation, which we talk about a little bit later. Um, and then incapacitation, which is the response used when a person has committed a crime. Um, incapacitation prevents um, an individual from committing future front, excuse me, future crimes due to usually incarceration or like probation, um, fines, things like that. Um, again, I talked about Vivian because um, her story really um, resonated with me. Um, so she was sentenced to jail for another probation probation violation, and she begs again for the drug rehabilitation but remains locked up um, and then has probation. And so um, she's getting um, in the incapacitation for the crime, and I guess it's preventing her from doing anything 
bad in the future, but it's not helping her. And that's kind of where my struggle with um, Gaul comes in. Um, and then um, a rehabilitation, which we talked about. Um, individuals um, through rehabilitation can be treated and then returned to a crime-free lifestyle. That's essentially, excuse me, what rehabilitation is for. And um, so I was looking at, um, it was talking about how Ohio, which is where Gall um, works and lives as a judge, um, it's, they were saying that they passed new legislation to help with rehabilitation. And then Gall himself talked about, I think he had a quote that said something like, he puts more people on probation than anyone else. But my issue with that is that uh, they also talked about how people would rather do time or pay money than go and do rehabilitation. And I think he must know this, um, Judge Gall, I mean. Um, and so it feels like um, Judge Gall isn't, like he's putting people on probation. He he said himself that while if you put someone on probation, you can always put them in jail later. And so it feels kind of like, um, I mean, and probation in general can be like an extended, like, like a less intense incarceration in a way. Um, but he really seems, Gaul seems to really take that to heart in terms of like, I'm just going to watch them. And it, it, the second they do anything bad, I, I throw them in jail. And so it just extends the, the struggle and the issue that a lot of these people who are convicted mostly for minor offenses, um, and a lot of them were not even, um, like they're kind of a witness to the crime or something like that or they're not directly involved in it um, and it just kind of keeps them within the system longer than I feel like they need to be um, and Gall also talks about in rehabilitation that he wants to see remorse but that's a pretty vague statement and because showing remorse is different for everybody um, so it's really hard um, with Gaul to really give him the the notion that someone has rehabilitated themselves um, when he did, you know he wants to see it a very specific way and then um, moving on to judicial discretion which is the power of the the judiciary to make some legal decisions according to their discretion the example that I had was with someone they called Terrell in the beginning um, they judge Gall told him that if he has another kid um, out of wedlock that he can't take care of, that's a, vo a violation of his probation. And I brought that up because um, it feels like a really bizarre judicial discretion to me. Um, so basically, he's making some decisions with um, his discretion, um, Gall is, um, but they even pointed out that this is unconstitutional doing this and so it, it I feel like a lot of Gaul's judicial discretion is like racially biased or um, you know anger motivated or very stereotype motivated it doesn't seem to he doesn't seem to have the best judicial discretion I guess is what I will say and then on to um, Factors that influence sentencing. Uh, the first one was severity of offense. Severity of offense, excuse me. Um, like Vivian, she violated probation. It was for like the fifth or sixth time. But I think part of that issue comes with Gall not giving her the rehabilitation that she needs. Um, and then um, the offender's prior record. I had a lot of different things for this. Um, so for Vivian, she had five previous probation violations, but has done everything that Gall has asked her to do in terms of rehabilitation or as like a punishment, I guess, um, except being able to stay clean because she's a drug addict and she wants to go into inpatient drug rehabilitation, as I've talked about. Um, and she wants the drug court in order to kind of make that happen and to work with her, but Gall refuses to let her do that um, because he doesn't think 
that it will help her and he also thinks that he seems to know more about it than they would and that he's worked with her and so they they don't need to go to another court for her um they also talked about um ray sean um so he had a prior record of a few different offenses since he was like 14 or so and he is, I wanted to say he was in his early 30s when, at the time of this particular incident. Um, but Gaul seems to capitalize on the fact that he has a prior record and um, really just kind of, you know, drills into him all of his different um, offenses over the years. And Rayshawn even talks about how, like, for most of the things that he's, a, you know, convicted of or accused of or brought to court about he was just you know caught at the wrong time wrong place wrong time and there were other things that other people were doing that he happened to be around for and so it was not necessarily something that he was involved with and then he also loves to say that Rayshawn has no remorse whatsoever um and then Rayshawn, I think in a, in a stroke of genius, honestly, writes a letter um, to Gaul right before he gets his sentence. Um, and it's like a four page letter. And it's basically like, you know, I see in the air of my ways and really talks about how Gaul um, influenced him to become a better person. And Gaul totally fe feeds into it. And he gets, and um, Rishon ends up getting a way reduced sentence, like at least in half, cut in half. Um, and when Rishon um, gets sentenced, um, Gaul is like, um, you know, if you, well, uh, you know, come back in six months, I'll probably like almost basically guarantees him a shock release. And then the six months go by and then Gaul basically totally throws out the window that Rayshawn has done this whole rehabilitation letter thing. Um, and he doesn't shock release him because he just reads off all the things that he's done wrong. It kind of just feeds into a lot of the stereotypes and like um, this anger that he seems to have. Um, and then he just doesn't shock release him. So that was very bizarre to me. Um, but it's interesting how his prior record, Rayshawn uh, specifically, really seems to influence Gaul's um, decision with um, sentencing him. And then use of violence and or a weapon. The only one that I really had as a as a example for that was Ray Sean. So there was a gun shot out of his car, but it was not by him. It was not his gun. Um, and he was still convicted um, because he's somehow responsible for it because he was he happened to be driving the car. Um, but again, he didn't know about the gun. It wasn't his gun. Um, so I don't, personally, I don't understand how he could be held responsible for something like that. And then, um, we go into pre-sentence investigation or PSI, which is the investigation into the history of a person convicted of a crime before sentencing to determine if there are extenuating circumstances, which should, um, you know, influence the sentence or a history of criminal behavior to increase the harshness of a sentence. Um, for example, um, with Terrell, um, which was in towards the beginning, um, he they talked about how his father was kind of scarcely in the picture. The parents divorced when Terrell was like five. Um, but Terrell's father, as far as he knows, is a decent guy. He has two sisters and a brother, and he also has a child that he had at age 18. And... Um, Judge Gall really seems to feed into the fact that, especially that Terrell has a child, because like I mentioned earlier, he basically says, if you have another child out of wedlock, um, that's a violation of your probation, and I'll throw you in jail. Um, which, like we talked about, is unconstitutional. So, um, And then I also kind of looked into Vivian, who had a child uh, born and then one on the way. So in other words, she was pregnant at the time of the, the sentencing and the whole trial and everything. And she doesn't want to lose her children, which is a very big um, influencer and in why she does what she does um, in terms of um, 
following everything that Judge Gall has wanted her to do in terms of being rehabilitated and fighting so hard for drug rehabilitation because she knows that that's the only way she's going to keep her children, yet Judge Gall doesn't seem interested, excuse me, in helping her out that way. So, um, yeah, that's kind of all I had with all of our terms. And then, um, so Judge Gall, uh, I've kind of touched a bit on this, but Judge Gall's judicial discretion throughout the podcast seems very, he's very harsh, he's blunt, he's brutal. He's like racial stereotypes out the wazoo. Like this guy is really, really seems to feed into that. And he's very um, heavily influenced by, um, you know, not only the racial stereotypes, but any sort of um, anything he doesn't want to hear, he instantaneously kind of acts and reacts to it, um, usually in a bad way, um, to the point where, you know, it can affect sentencing, whether it makes sense to or not. Um, and then analyze how the factors that influence sentencing were demonstrated in Judge Gall's courtroom. And so I talked a little bit about this. He seems to have a lot of um, in kind of weird and random and almost insignificant factors that influence sentencing for him. Um, and so in my opinion, I don't think he's using those appropriately. I think like the fact that like he capitalizes on the fact that you know, you know young people, especially young people of color, have children young. And then uses that against them in terms of sentencing and in terms of guilting them into, um, you know, get, throwing them through a guilt trip. And so, yeah, I just don't think he uses um, those factors very appropriately at all. And then the importance of the pre-sentence investigation and the detail, and then um, detailing Judge Gall's use of the PSI. I mostly touched on this. I don't think it was appropriate the way he used it. Again, like I talked about using people's backgrounds, which is not something that they can necessarily, um, you know, in, you know, take responsibility for. Like, kids are born into the families that they're born into, and they can't necessarily be, um, you know, held accountable for um, just biologically what ended up happening with them, like the nurture environment that they were in. So it just doesn't make sense to me the way that he uses the PSI to, uh, as a way to like harp on and bring down the offenders and, um, yeah, just really, um, tear them down for things that are out of their control. So, um, yeah, I think that's, Mostly everything I wanted to address in the video. Sorry, this video is late and also long. Um, I apologize, and uh, I look forward to reading your guys' responses. So, thank you.